Today we are going to talk about what I think the future of architecture is based on my uh, 20 year experience of collaborating with engineers, fabricators and architects and especially in the recent times uh, working a lot on prefabricated architecture, timber architecture, so there is a hint there for you. Uh, this video will follow this new format that I have where I don't really, uh, you see I'm missing a word, where I don't really prepare for any of the videos, I just have a um, quick idea of what I'm going to talk about and I think that's much better because you will hear my <clears throat> honest opinions and uh, honest approaches, uh, honest approach to, to, to the subject. So just uh, quickly tell you about the point of this video. I think that the future is in uh, prefabricated architecture and a um, certain way of uh, approaching design is very connected to that. So I am going to show you a graph that I created for myself, kind of internally, to explain to myself in what uh, stages of the design, what is important and what road to take if you're an architect, an engineer and fabricator. So I'm going to go through this graph with you. I don't have it in front of me, I actually took my phone so that it reminds me of <coughs> what it is about, but as I talk I will show the graph on the screen uh, so that you can follow as well and um, here we go. So as you can see uh, on the graph, the very first question I ask is, is this a solid building, like a normal concrete building that you can see built all around you in almost all of the cities on the planet, right? Or is it a building made out of prefabricated elements? So if uh, the answer is solid, then you hit a red mark on my uh, graph and where I say that there are no elements that can enter our library and I will talk about that because if we build with prefabricated elements, we create a library of elements, some standards, some custom that we can reuse, recycle, not only in modeling, but later in real life as well. But making this model parametrically, although we do it from time to time, now for me does not make so much sense anymore. And I don't see this as a future of this new architecture because I explained this in other videos, I'm not going to elaborate on that now, but I think that prefabricated, made in the factory, precise, fast, and then assembled on site, that is the future. So that's why, let me see, on the graph we have elements, right? Your house is assembled out of prefabricated elements. If that's the road we follow, then we can ask a question, is this a normal object or is it one of those Frank Gehry Zaha did free form objects, right? The one that have 50,000 different elements. The ones that follow me and follow this channel know that that is my specialty, that for the last 20 years I have worked on those projects and wrote software that parametrically generated, starting with the Shenzhen airport and 300 whatever thousand square meters of uh, double curved hexagonal facade over different projects from Zaha Hadid, Frank Gehry and uh, most recently the Las Vegas Sphere. And what I wrote here is that the parametric generation of elements in those projects is the only solution. So no one can do those manually. We all know that that's where the computational design shines, where the computational design was born. And uh, so we can create all elements from the basic design until the production automatically. Uh, and we do not even need 2D. I spoke about this as well. We built the entire Las Vegas uh, sphere, the entire inner screen, inner structure, without really any 2D uh, production drawings. But I talk about that in, uh, in other videos. So let's follow the graph further and say that you uh, do not have a free form object, mostly, most likely you won't because that's a very small percentage of architecture. You have like a normal standard uh, orthogonal project or similar. The question is, do you as an architect, now we're talking, I'm talking to the architects, get to design and control the building blocks, right? The elements for the final construction of the object. And at this point, I want to, uh, to address something that I think is the normal standard way to design today that I kind of trying to disrupt and you will see all the ways in which I am trying to disrupt that. But for that I will show you this different graph that says that if I design a house and I'm in the first stages of design and I draw a wall, 
That wall has two lines, but I'm not so sure how it is built. I'm not so, so sure what those lines represent, like no element is defined. And then in the same way we see like a generative AI, like mid journey or whatever, generate a picture where it's firstly foggy and then the resolution starts to increase. That's how we kind of design in architecture, right? We start with the basic sketches, basic concepts, and then the LOD, the level of detail and the resolution start to increase as the communication uh, starts circling between the architects, engineers, MEP engineers, structural engineers, and so on. And then we all together try to find a solution because no one, no one knows exactly from the start what the right solution is. And then we come to something that's in, uh, in Germany and Austria, it's called uh, Leistungsphase 5, which is the phase five of the project where we kind of have to the, define more or less the digital twin whether it's in 2D or not, but we have to define the details of how it's built. And then we do have our elements if we're dealing with an assembled prefabricated object. Then we can continue to automate from there and so on and, um, and maybe talk about uh, automated assembly and, and so on. So to go back to our graph, that is the question that I'm asking here. So do you, as an architect, get to design these building blocks or, do, or does someone else take that away from you. So if the answer is no, you don't get to design, you don't get to think about those, those, those building blocks, that means that you're an architectural office that brings the project through this phase, until this phase five, so through this couple of design stages, but it's not of your concern how it's going to be built exactly. Then if you're just doing that design, then I have a question for you, is this a competition or is it not a competition? If this is not a competition, then uh, you hit a red mark on my plan. That means that you kind of guessed what the future of <laughs> architecture is. In my view, that's prefabricated architecture by robots and assembled on site by robots uh, eventually. But you as an architect do not control that, right? You just have the, this design phase. You do not concern yourself with these building blocks. Uh, you do not put that in your library that you can reuse and recycle later. So you're not really a part of this story that I envision for the future of architecture. If you are dealing with the competition, then you arrive at the place three, you get the bronze medal in my graph. That means that uh, it's okay. You don't have to uh, concern yourself now with uh, really fully parametric uh, elements. But you, since you're doing a competition, you can do a fully parametric model of a building and that makes sense, right? Now it, it's, we're talking about if it makes sense to automate or not. You can test a lot of iteration on that in a fast way. And yeah, we can talk about that in another video, how, uh, how Rhino especially and parametric design is used for the competitions. But now let's see what the silver medal and the gold medal is. So we go back to that uh, uh, node on the graph that says that do you as an architect get to design and control the building blocks? And hopefully you do. If you do, we come to one of the most important questions for me lately. And that is, do you start with building blocks in mind or you do you just follow that graph that I showed before where you draw some lines and then wait to define the actual elements later on. So do you, uh, do you basically follow the 99% of the practice today? Uh, if you follow what the practice does today and you start slowly with some lines, with some concepts and increase in detail later, you kind of, in my mind, you figured out what the ideal system is. We do prefabricate, we do assemble a site, but you're doing it too late. You're missing out on the opportunities. So what I wrote is you can use it to uh, this to add elements to your library of, uh, of, of, of elements that you can later recycle and reuse, but you do it very late from that stage of uh, technical execution. You missed the opportunity to parametrically generate your digital twin from the very start. And this is very important. So I am preaching that you can very early on in the design process start already to generate the digital twin. So you speed up the whole process and then you're able to optimize and create more options. So in my mind, you reach the silver medal and you have the half of the opportunities. 
And let's go back and finally reach the gold medal. Do you start with building blocks or do you just draw some lines? You say, no, I actually start with building blocks. And uh, here I wrote, congratulations, you have the ideal system that can create digital twins automatically, parametrically and fast and uh, feed the library for future reuse and recycle. So the idea here is that if you have more or less the idea of what prefabricated elements you are going to use, you have a system that you developed, you, you have a library from your previous objects, you then parametrically define how to position those elements in space, right? So we write code or we make grasshopper definitions that pull those objects from the library. Some of them you create newly for that project. That's also okay, but you have like your library of, of, of assets and then you pull them and you populate them in space. And I'm going to talk about this in one of the next videos. Uh, that's a perfect way to create, uh, to create a clean digital twin model where your building is basically an Excel table of assets and their position in space, and that's it. And then at the bottom of that pyramid, you just, of the bottom of that assembly pyramid, you just have parts and their geometries. As I said, I'm going to talk about that in one of the next videos, maybe even the exactly next video, but here I'm going to stop uh, because this is what I wanted to address in this video particularly, I made videos, some of, the, of them are a couple of years old, where I talk about prefabrication being the future. That's not such a new and edgy uh, opinion. I think most people uh, agree on that by now. What uh, is still a misconception is that prefabricated and modular means all the same. Uh, I argue that in other videos uh, and that we, the new modules are algorithms. So now we have finally reached uh, the stage where we can attack this holy grail in architecture, which is custom design and fully prefabricated and modular uh, built and assembly. And uh, you will definitely see some of that coming, especially in some of the companies that I'm uh, involved with. But we will talk about that on, uh, some other time. What the take home is here for this video, especially if you're an architect, think about this standard process that we have, the standard process of design, where you keep increasing the resolution, but every st step along the way, you have this communication with all of the parties involved. And we know that the communications are always the bottlenecks. They are what makes this exchange of models and everything, uh, that, that's what makes the, the process so slow. But think about how much you can speed things up if you started by thinking about the uh, elements but the assets that go into the building, they're in LOD, 400, 500, whatever, until the very screw, nut and bolt from the very beginning. How much more control you would have, how much more clean and precise your digital twins would be, and how much more uh, faster and, uh, and preciser and cleaner and safer and whatever you can add couple of adjectives there, even sustainable your design can be. We will talk about this more in the future, but let's stop here for now. Think about it, prefabricated is the future, algorithms are the new models. Stay free.